Hey, my name is Elichai, and I'm a resident here at Chaincode. A little here, a little background on me. I'm from Israel, and I'm in the Bitcoin scene since 2013. Now, I actually got into Bitcoin from cryptography, so I learned about cryptography, and I, I realized that you can actually encrypt something that not even you can decrypt, only the recipient can, and I think this is like mind blowing. Um, and that's like only the tip of the iceberg. And then I heard about this thing that utilizes the cryptography to create a whole trustless economy. And this thing is obviously Bitcoin. And I worked on it since then. Um, I worked on a couple of different open source projects, mostly around, um, mostly around double spending. And I consulted for a company for a while that does double spending prevention. Um, meaning they give insurance against for unconfirmed transactions. So I mostly did how can you identify transaction, transactions that are being double spent and how, how, what different tactics are there to double spend. And I also worked for a while at a company that does confidential smart contracts. Now, when I got into the residency, I wanted to choose a project that is related to something that I care about in Bitcoin, okay? So I think the things that are more impor the most important for me in Bitcoin are, first of all, I want Bitcoin to be as private as we can. So I personally don't like, don't want people to know how much I'm making or what am I spending on, okay? So I would like Bitcoin to be private. I also really want one day to run full node on my phone, okay? I think if we can make initial block download faster, and also important, we need to make transaction verification fast so that it doesn't kill your battery. I really hope that one day we actually get to the point that we can run full nodes on our phones. And I think the obvious one is security. Like, if Bitcoin isn't secure, there is no point. We already have a PayPal, we don't need a second PayPal. Like, we need to make sure everything stays secure, okay? That's why I thought Taproot is a very interesting idea. Taproot is a proposal by Peter Willy that proposes to hide the Bitcoin script inside of the public key in a way that you only expose the part that you actually spend. Okay? That way, there's, no one knows that there's been other branches of the script inside of it. This, first of all, it's obviously helping the privacy. Okay? You don't see that there's been other branches. You see only the one that actually is being used. And as a side effect, it's, uh, it gives prior fees estimation. It optimizes the fees, okay? As a side effect, you pay less fees. Now, the way we, can, the way we need to add Taproot to the Bitcoin Core wallet is by using something called output descriptors. We thought that there is a Bitcoin address and a private key, okay? But this doesn't really work like that because a private key can represent a pay to script hash, a pay to pub key hash, and other stuff. So we need something more comprehensive to actually re represent Bitcoin addresses and how to spend them. That's where output descriptors come in. Output descriptors are an abstract, abstract idea that lets you describe how to identify your coins. So even in a multisig, for example, multisig having your private key is not enough. You can't even know that you've got money because you need everyone else's public keys to know what, what's your address. But using output descriptors, we can actually identify exactly what are coins and what do we need to do to actually spend them. So adding Taproot support into that is, I think, a very important step into having Taproot inside of Bitcoin Core wallet. So when we do that, we actually gain a lot of interesting stuff. So like you have the taproot with, uh, inside of the descriptor and this gives you a way to see all of the different branches and how can you spend each and every one of them and also implicitly what are going to be the fees cost for every branch. Okay? So that's really nice. Now a very obvious thing after this is PSBT. Okay? PSBT is partially signed Bitcoin transaction. This is a standard by Andrew Chow that is meant to let to give wallets, different wallets, the ability to talk with each other. 
for example, if you want to gain the security of a hardware wallet and the trustlessness of a Bitcoin, full, Bitcoin core full node, you cannot do this right now. Okay? They don't know how to talk with each other. With PSBT, if they both support it, they will be able to talk with each other. And even you want to participate in a Wasabi coin join, if Wasabi supports PSBT, Bitcoin Core can actually participate in a Wasabi coin join. This is pretty awesome. So Taproot into this PSBT will hopefully help the whole industry adapt Taproot faster and, and have actual Taproot support into hardware wallets and Wasabi and every Casa Hotel, all, all, all of those awesome projects out there. That way we can actually get users using it. Now, all of that is to improve the privacy, okay, using Taproot. But also speed is important. And currently, there is a bunch of stuff we can make better. For example, something I worked on is batching multisig verification. So currently, if you, if you do a multisig, okay, then you have k out of n, let's say 3 out of 7. Currently, a multisig verification casts the n, meaning you need to do the 7 signature verifications. And signature verification is a very costly operation. So doing seven signature verification is a lot of work. But if we do some cool math and batch them together, we can decrease it down to the K. So there are people out there who are doing seven out of 15. And with this, instead of doing 15 signature verifications, we will do only seven to verify their transaction, which I think is a pretty good improvement. And um, yeah. Another thing, as I've said, security is important. And C and C++, we all love those languages and they're awesome, but they have a lot of memory problems, okay? It's, they, they're really powerful, but it's so easy to make mistakes. It's so easy to do use after free and a lot of those known bags and there's exploits in that every day in, in every product we use. Rust proposes a way, it's a new language, that proposes a way to gain the performance of C and C++, but with memory safety. So that stuff like use after free are impossible to do unless you're explicitly trying to do something. I really hope that one day we can actually have Rust inside of Bitcoin Core and be utilizing it, because I think that this is, in the future, every consensus critical code and security critical code will use Rust. But today, Andrew Polster is leading a lot of work into having a Bitcoin library in Rust. And I joined him to make Rust SecP, which is a Rust bindings to the libsecp library, platform independent. So you can now run this library on your phone, on your browser, in every platform that supports Rust. And if we take that and a bunch of other fixes in Rust Bitcoin and Rust Lightning, we can actually run now a full lightning node inside the browser. So you can run a full node with channels and everything in Chrome, in Firefox, or even in Edge. Okay, that's pretty crazy. Um, and every software requires maintenance. Okay, like it's very easy to say, um, yeah, maintenance, maintenance, but that's important. Like if, we, if you don't maintain something, that's where bugs come in and exploits and a lot of real problems. Okay, so what's next? Um, there's, with Taproot and Schnorr, okay, with Taproot comes Schnorr, which is a new signature scheme. Now, Peter Willy and Andrew Polstra published an amazing paper called MuSig, which is a way to do, and, uh, it, which is a way to take the multi-signature, which currently you need to expose all the public keys and all the signatures involved, so there is no policy in a multi-signature. But music does it every, does all of this off chain. Okay, mathematically you do the multisig, but in the end Bitcoin sees only a public key and a signature, which is great. But currently it supports only n out of n, so you can do two out of two, three out of three, but you cannot do three out of five, which is a problem. Meaning that if even with Taproot and Schnorr, people who do threshold signature are gonna lose a lot of privacy because of it. People, like you could see that there has been some sort of threshold there. But there is a way cryptographically to have music with threshold signature, and I want to work on it and implement it. There's still some open problems, mainly the secure broadcast channel, but they're all solvable, and I think this is a great thing to have. So 
Taproot gives us a way to take a lot of the logic off of, of this so-called Bitcoin blockchain that you only expose what you need. With MuSig, I just said, we can even say that you only expose, if you have multisig, you only expose the result. You don't expose there's been a multisig. There's other techniques like scriptless scripts by Andrew Polstra and other, and other cool stuff there that I hope that if we utilize all of them, we can one day have no logic on the beat itself. Almost all of the logic will be off-chain, and that way we will have like a 100% anonymity set, meaning even if someone else is doing some lightning channel, okay, I don't do lightning channel, why do I care if he's like getting more private? But because he's getting more private and now his addresses look exactly like mine, mine are also all more private because I have now a bigger anonymity set, which is great. So I think this is a, a research vector that we can, we need to pursue and try to implement cool stuff into Bitcoin. But all of this is like, this is awesome. We have new features in Bitcoin, it's cool, but we need to make users actually use them, okay? And there's a problem because currently, a lot of the industry, a lot of people, they're doing their products and Bitcoin Core are doing their Bitcoin Core stuff. We need to bridge it. We need more and more tools that help actual industry and developers and users use these cool features. Even SegWit addresses, it took time. And I think now there's most of the companies out there support SegWit, but it takes time. And we can bridge this gap and make everything faster if we concentrate on making more tools that do this. Now, another thing which is related to the batch verification. We, as I said, I want to make Bitcoin faster. So I think just like that, there's a bunch of other micro optimizations. Like we all hope that we can profile Bitcoin and see this function which is slow and we can optimize it out and everything would be awesome. But reality is more complicated. In reality, you usually profile a very big software and you don't see anything specific which destroys your performance. And that's because there's nothing specific which does it. The reason software is slow is because everything is a bit not the best it can. But if we work on micro optimizations like getting better hash maps, better hash sets, using the least amount of memory we can in structs, I think we can gain a lot of performance increases using these micro optimizations. Because in the end, it all adds up, okay? A few bytes, you said it's nothing to worry about in a struct, that then goes on to the, to the cache and exponentially, and not more and more structs like it, you flush to disk way before you need, and that's not good. And yeah, thank you for listening. Um, any questions?